Bucru with Mary. Through the Mists by Robert James Lees. Chapter 6, Session 3. 31st of May 2012, Wondai, Queensland, Australia. Hi everyone. Welcome to uh, our third session of our discussion of Chapter 6 of Through the Mists. How'd everyone go this week? Okay. <laughs> Not that excited about it. <laughs> yeah, good. All right, yeah. I just wanted to tell you before we start at the back, there's some old handouts that we found doing a clean-up today. Um, it's a beautiful handout from a talk we gave, or that AJ gave in 2009, Developing a Relationship with God, Longing or Praying for Divine Love. There's a six-page handout um, which is basically a summary of the talk, and there's a whole pile of them up there in front of the gifting table uh, sign. So if you'd like one, go for it. Thanks for reminding me, Joy. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's get on to Chapter 6, huh? The last part, the serious part. How, who struggled with their homework or who loved it? Who, yeah. Does anyone want to share... Some of their reflections. Yes, yeah, Sandra? Oh, the mic's here. <laughs> um, I loved it because I've read it so many times and I could not get it through to myself what it meant. Yep. And this time, it all made sense. It was just beautiful and it was just, I loved it, totally loved it, that part now. Before I struggled, really struggled with, I think I was in rebellion to understand it actually. Uh -huh. yeah. So what new thing did you understand this time when you read it? Just what it means what justice means in God's, you yep. know, in God's... So, yeah, so let's summarise a little bit. This last part of the chapter is about mercy, uh, God's mercy, mercy God's system of justice. Uh, he talks a little bit about the law of compensation or the action upon our soul when we're not repentant, although he doesn't specifically refer to repentance yet. Um, and then he talks about the how the how the penalties upon the soul work, doesn't he, really? Yeah. yeah. And so forgiveness as well. Yeah, forgiveness, mercy, justice, yeah. repentance. Yeah. yeah. So what new thing did you see about justice? That it's not a punishment, that it is to correct an error. Yeah. So I've viewed it completely wrong up until now. And, um, and I really loved, actually the fact that mercy operates on earth and that we then mature enough almost it feels like oh you throw up the you, th you throw off whatever the facade is and you get to actually feel the truth that you are in once you pass and this really just made I don't know what happened to me like it's just weird like I understood it on a completely different level and it's just I found it so beautiful actually and uh -huh. almost makes me feel like as well that you know this feeling that if I could see what you see in the spirit body I could progress faster but that's just an error that I, I'm, I'm not willing to face that I'm actually being cushioned here with mercy and I, I'm almost rebelling against that mercy which is a huge error obviously because I should be really grateful for the fact that well let's let's talk about as a group this issue of mercy and and how it operates upon the earth and why we think it operates upon the earth who else has some <laughs> Deirdre and I got the mic um, that's why I was giggling, both the mic holders. <laughs> was there an ulterior motive in saying I'll carry the mic? <laughs> oh, I actually um, really loved the questions for the homework because for about a year or so I've been grappling with why God allows uh, adults in like a really poor soul condition to have children mm -hmm. because it's like you start really behind the eight ball but then we have mercy and I, it's just my little humble opinion yeah. that I think we have mercy on earth because we can have children. So, for example, if I can just use my illustration, because I've been, like, born to parents with really poor soul condition, yeah. it's like, well, it'll be, like, kind of unloving if I'm punished from the start of all the... 
like acts of unloving acts I'm going to do as a child and all that. Yep. Um, because I just don't know any, or wasn't taught any differently. So as we get to grow up, we can then start to question, oh, geez, I'm pounding now. It's like, ah, oh, my parents are unloving. Ah, oh, their, their parents aren't. Yeah. Ah, oh, there is a better way. Ah, oh, I can do things differently. So we have mercy on earth so that I can use my power of awareness Yes. And all that so I can make choices and all that that I didn't have at the beginning but I can learn them and become yep. better or a more loving person yeah. irrespective of my starting life. Hmm. I like your reflection, Deirdre. <laughs> Does everyone understand sort of what Deirdre is getting at? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's very true. I think there's a lot of mercy in operation here so that we can begin to come to understand that we have a will of our own and to use uh, to almost experiment with that will and we have the opportunity to observe what happens around us when we use our will or how other people use our will and we can begin to have um, to grow can't we in in this knowledge of, of what is loving and what isn't loving or what does it mean my life what would happen if, you know, he talks in the chapter about if justice was in place from the very beginning? And he says it in a very dramatic way, doesn't he? <laughs> if you pass the mic to Kel, um, I'll just find the place while the mic's going to you, Kel, the, the sentence where it says... Um, no... Um, Justice demands that an instant liberation shall be given? No. no. <laughs> well, <laughs> Same one, still no. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm looking. You got it, Alex, but you don't have the page number, do you? Um, he talks about basically if mercy was given up here on earth and justice was in place from the beginning, we'd, we'd all be basically abolished. Yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd be abolished and then... <laughs> restarted then abolished and then <laughs> yeah. we'd go to go again and we'd be yeah wiped yeah. out <laughs> yeah all right so so what did what did you think Kel about this whole uh this um, whole justice and mercy thing a lot <laughs> yeah um this is yeah been an ama amazing like Sandra uh, I just um found it beautiful found it like so many realizations from all of this and this mode of existence with mercy and justice and forgiveness all working together in my life. And it's just highlighted um, you, God's gifts and attributes in the way they operate for me and highlighted how much I put out and transact and, and this operates in my life, you know, at every... At now, right now, you know. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I've got lots of colourful diagrams here of how I've sort of visualised it and how I could verbalise it. But um, so, can you talk about this this idea of yeah. justice? Remember, yeah. I said, what would it be like if if justice was in operation from from the get go, or or why some in, of what? Yeah, go ahead. Do you mean in if justice was in operation in era like from here on earth? In the way that exists right. in the spirit world. Yeah. Well, we we wouldn't have the mercy and the allowance to make mistakes. Yep. And so that's what free will um, is given to us to be able to do, yep. to learn from our own experience and to learn about love or to learn where we're not loving. Yes. To be able to correct itself. Yep. And continue with life and love <laughs> and a relationship with God. It's, yep. it's a lot to say in a nutshell. This it is. And I feel like everyone's going, it's so great, it's so awesome, I love it. Um, but what do you mean, guys? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do, do I mean around... Well, what does this mean in our day-to-day -day lives? This means learning... Yep. So to God's me. given us the possibility to learn about our will. Yeah. Learn about myself, learn about love, learn about God. 
yes. learn about this whole process of why I'm sitting here. Yep, yep. And why I'll have a relationship with anybody else. Yep, yep. You know, I'm not a robot. I wasn't created... By God, we weren't created as robots just to get through this sort of physical path, pathway. There's a lot. There's just so much <laughs> else in, in play. And yep. this is a crucial part of it. <laughs> yes. All right, let's go <laughs> to somebody else. <laughs> Luli. Please, yeah. Um, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to verbalise it either. Um for me, God is allowing us to do actually what our parents haven't allowed us to do. In that when we're little, our parents are like, no, you're not allowed to make mistakes. No, you're not allowed to um, learn. You're not allowed to discover your true self. We want you to be what we want you to be. Yes. Whereas God's not doing that. And God's saying, no, I want you to make mistakes and learn and discover your real self. So it's kind of like standing back and letting us go forth and discover ourselves. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, I agree also. Um, if we pass the mic to Barbara next to you and then we'll go back to Nina. Um, I feel the reality is if, um, um, if God's justice system that's in heaven was here on earth, there would be nobody here. We would have... Well, see, it... now that's what it says in the chapter. What I'm asking you to do is to think about what is it? what would it really be like? Because we could be here... <laughs> He, remember in the in the um, in the writing, there's a lot of use of metaphor and emotive language and things. Now I'm asking you, let's get grounded. What would it be like if God's justice was as it exists in the spirit world? What would it be like if it was here now? We would be feeling the consequences of our actions immediately. Yes. So therefore, our correction process would be instantaneous instead of maybe long-winded. Yes. Now. And and what happens in the spirit world? Um, the consequences, how, how, are, how are they evident to us? Through your um, soul condition, um, yep. through um, uh, the degradation, degradation of your soul condition. Yep, and so um, how is it evident to us? Um, through, um, in, the, in the spirit world? Yes. Through colour, through um, um, whatever you're projecting. If it's good, it's nice colours. If it's bad, it's terrible colours. Um, where you actually live in the in the yes. in the spirit yep. world. So in your environment, yes, yes. it's limited, isn't it? Yes. And our freedom is limited, also, isn't it? Depending on your environment. Yes. Depending on yes. Yes. Yeah. So every time we act in disharmony with love, or if we have acted in disharmony with love, there's a there's a restriction upon us when yes. we enter the spirit world, isn't there? Yeah. So if that was in operation on Earth. We made one really big stuff up. <laughs> With no mercy. <laughs> With no mercy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as Deirdre pointed out beautifully in the beginning, if we've come from, as Lily said, this condition where there's parents who haven't given us opportunities to learn or grow or they are very damaged themselves, then we're gonna, probably going to make a few stuff ups in the beginning, aren't we? Only a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... You're right, it would be, our soul condition would be evidenced here on earth and it would be very rapid and it would be often very painful that, that one stuff up. So once that's happened, we're in a lot of pain immediately, we're restricted immediately and then we have to, we're just young, we don't really understand our will, we don't understand what, what's going on here. We have to figure that out in the depths of all this pain and try to make better choices. Mm. So you can see it would be quite a struggle, wouldn't it? Mm. So in that way, it seems very loving that God has given us this, get, this doorway into our whole existence where there's some mercy in operation, where he's very in his patience and his love. He's giving us some time to kind of figure it all out. Yeah, yeah. All right, if we go to the back with Jen. Thank you, Barbara. Mary, I have a question. Yep. First of all, I felt tremendous gratitude to have the divine truths be offered to me so that I could experience God's mercy in my life. But my question was, how is it then for those people who have already passed, who perhaps have passed 
both my parents have passed in quite difficult conditions, quite high levels of denial. How is it then mm, just, if you like? Yeah. I can't think of another word. That they've passed not having heard or not having um, the gift that I've been given of hearing the divine truth and being able to experience mercy. They passed into a poor condition and not experienced the truth or had that opportunity. I think I understand your question. How yeah. is it? How is that just? And like there are like generations. It's not just my mum and dad. They're just ge everybody's mums and dads here have passed, and generations of people who've not heard the truth. Where where is the justice in the law in that? Okay, let's go back to the start of your question where you said that knowing divine truth means that you now can experience mercy. Is that true? No. Because no. we're all experiencing God's mercy. We're, before we knew the divine truth, we, it's in operation here for everyone on the planet. Isn't it a choice? No. Because, because um, just as we were just talking about... Um, the consequences, the, the mercy we're referring to here in this chapter is the mercy that is in operation for every single person on the planet right now. If there was no mercy from God, then the consequences, the law of compensation would be in our face immediately and quite forcibly the moment we made our first mistake in this existence. So can you see that because that's not happening, mercy's in operation for everyone? So that's the first thing. Okay, now what's the second part of the question? <laughs> well, well, then, if mercy's in operation for everyone, then the rest of the question's null and void because you've already answered it. Because right. those people who have already passed have, have, have the opportunity to experience... Mercy, but I'm just not sure how. If you're not aware of the law and the law still exists and you're still using your free will... How do we become aware of the law? It's not from a guy with a whiteboard. <laughs> Jesus with a whiteboard or Mary or any one of you with a whiteboard could be. Um, how do we become aware of the law? Suzanne? Because we're all gifted with natural love. So within us already there's the ability to observe and discern yes. and learn if, yes. if we have the heart and the will to do that and we will naturally attract the things that will take us further down a more loving path or a less loving path. Can't hear, Ange? No. Oh, okay. You, yeah. Louder? Booming? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we all have the ability to discern... And our loving actions take us down a more loving path and our unloving actions take us down a less loving path. So it's like a feedback loop all of the time. Yes. There is, as, as we all know, whether we know it or not, God's inbuilt a lot of feedback mechanisms, hasn't he, in our existence so that we can learn. And he's given us will and desire, which when we exercise them, there's going to be immediate feedback. So this truth is not... Um, uh, cordoned off for, for people who've heard the guy with the whiteboard. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like it's God's designed everything in his universe to help us learn these truths. Yeah. But how, how do we really learn them? We learn them through the exercise of our will. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's only through that exercise that the truth is going to enter us. When we're open through that experience, that then the truth enters us, doesn't it? Yeah, do you agree? Have you experienced Emotionally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Just quickly for what it's worth, I believe the American Indians... Y you, um, I'm way too soft, okay. Yeah. I believe the American Indians consider that you're a child until about the age of 52. <laughs> and they say that it's not until you've gone through the full cycle of having been a parent and a grandparent and you've had that time on earth that you can be considered to have any wisdom at all. Yeah. And in the Western world, we say 18 or 21, so... And, yeah. and I think I was sharing with some of you on the weekend where, where I often feel like at five, we have far more wisdom than we do at 50. <laughs> because, because the whole world is really designed to 
beat the wisdom out of us in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm just going to share with you a little bit about what I wrote about mercy. Um, So basically the truth that this chapter is showing us is that on earth we are allowed to experiment and make mistakes, aren't we? God gives us freedom to make large errors and learn before being crippled by the compensation associated with those errors. And this is another thing that struck me when I was reading. This not only allows us to understand our will, which is sort of what um, Deidre and Luli were pointing out, but it also allows us to develop integrity. That is to develop a will that is loving, not in response to compensation alone, but based on experimenting with our will and having the opportunity to observe and reflect on the effects we see in those around us and feel within us. Can you see the difference there? When someone develops this through the use of our loving will or through the use of our will and a desire to love, when we develop this sense without having a big whopping sign put in our face going wrong, <laughs> you know, that, that hurts. Or When we do it that way, we can become much more sensitive to God's uh, children, God's creation and also our own soul. Um, yep, so rather than needing external correction. This gives us a huge opportunity to understand our will, the power and the power of our will to affect others. Even after a person enters the spirit world and has the law of compensation begin to be more perceptible, that is in their environment, in their spirit body, they still have many lessons to learn about the loving use of will and the power of their will. So uh, what I see is that God is giving us a big opportunity here on earth to understand some, some big principles if we have these two, like loving, a desire to love and a desire to use our will in harmony with love. Um, yeah, and I'm basically saying what I've written. Yeah. We have a large opportunity here to learn and express our will without God enforcing consequences. So mercy pleads while hope of restitution remains. Did that stand out to anyone else? I think that's so beautiful in that God is giving this, us this environment of mercy where he's almost pleading, you know, he's, he's allowing the mercy to plead with us. Um, and he is very hopeful that before we even pass that we will make restitution for all of the, the harm that we've done. Monique? Um, what really struck me in what you're saying and what I felt when reading it this week was that I thought God was punishing in the systems and the laws, but um, that it seems like that he's so compassionate in in allowing us just to have our free will just to experiment. And I, I know I haven't grasped that fully, but it's... You know, one of God's qualities in that. And even even that justice isn't a punishment like Lily said or did you say I don't know. Anyway, that um that it's that it's to help us become more loving. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And that's probably something else I wanted to address to Jen when she was saying, Well, people pass and then they're in this dark place and how is that justice? When we read in the chapter, I think it's on page eighty one of the printed book. He talks a little about justice. And he says, You judge of justice in the light of your earth impressions. So he, he's, can you feel what he's saying there? He's saying we're viewing it through our injured state of how we enforce justice on the planet, which is very punishing, isn't it? And he says... Um, he basically explains that it's a very equal, equally meted out, isn't it? And there's no prejudice, there's no partiality. It's, it's very simple, plain, uh, beautiful justice that exists. And um, he says, think of it as such and you will love its righteousness. And, and I feel that um, very often we don't love the righteousness of justice when we hear about what's, what happens when many people enter the spirit world or the actual consequences upon our soul lots of us don't feel like oh I love that justice do we (laughs) Kel (laughs) I've been watching um, some 
movies lately and it shows how much revenge emotions I have in me, yeah. according to that. Yeah. And, yeah. yes, all um, how much I feel I want that person to get that person back and oh, I've just seen how much I've actually got in me around that. Yeah, which is actually saying, I don't want God's justice, yeah. I want my justice. Exactly, yeah. 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 That's yeah. sort of how the planet's been for a long time. Absolutely. There's no trust in God's justice. No. Yeah. All the laws, the, the whole... The, it's, well, like I see God as being the ultimate, you know, judge, not the man-made courtroom judge. Yeah. You know, ultimate everything. Yeah, well, but do you really see him as the ultimate judge oh, if you want in, revenge? Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> Intellectually, I can start to understand that now, but no, not emotionally, I haven't. Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. If we all kind of rested on that knowledge, if we all trusted in it, things would be a lot simpler, wouldn't they? Yeah. Glenda? Another thing that struck me about the definition of justness or justice in this chapter was that it's not only from the punishment side of things like it's not what what happened in this corral was actually justice not yes. mercy yes yes so it was giving back people's freedom is actually justice, justice. Yeah. so justice is not always this bad thing yeah. that happens it's also the good justice yes yeah yeah beautiful point exactly and that's what really is what he's trying to say to him there isn't it he's saying you're viewing it from this very like dark and punishing thing when actually it's something that equalizes everything and and it actually gives opportunities to to learn and grow even for those who find themselves confronted with what they've done and in a dark condition therein is the 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 opportunity as well as well as these other people who are given the opportunity to enter life in a in this new phase of their life in a much more free place. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, if we go to Pierre and then to Deb. Um, to come back uh, about mercy, um, would it be right to say that um, mercy is like when we uh, use our free will in a, a loving way and we would not feel directly the emotional pain of it. That would be a way a mercy operates. Would that be right to say? We wouldn't feel the external... Um, we wouldn't feel any external pain coming to us. We wouldn't feel any restriction upon us, upon our will or anything. We, the, the mercy... It's not mercy when we're in denial of the emotional pain that's inside of us. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not expressing myself very well today, I know. But um, mercy is God's, God saying, I will not enforce, I will not restrict, I will not enforce restriction upon you on this earth plane and I will let you have your will. So if I'm unloving then to you and I don't feel any emotional pain about that, that's not actually... Man, <laughs> sorry. That's not actually God's mercy. That's my insensitivity, if it's my own emotional pain. Now, when we enter the spirit world, often we feel emotional pain because God is enforcing the compensation upon our soul. And the first pain we feel is, I can't have my addictions met. So it's not repentant pain. It's just, I want freedom. I want to be able to get these emotions for people and God is restricting me. So that's now the starting to be the workings of justice in its full sense. Do you understand the distinction? Yeah. Whereas well. on earth, if I act to harm you, the pain that would be inside of me would not be as a result of my addictions not getting met because usually my addictions are probably met through that action. The pain that does is inside of me is the law of compensation which means I have harmed another person and there is a pain and a weight upon my soul. Now that's what com comes into operation externally when we enter the spirit world but we have the opportunity here on earth to feel that, to connect with our soul rather than have the environment reflect our soul, we can connect to our soul and feel that pain. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Whereas like... 
when we enter the spirit world, the, the first thing that happens is, like here we are, say that's you, your environment is restricted in some way. You can't go where you want or it's not nice and pretty or whatever it is or a combination of those things. So the first pain you feel is just about that restriction usually because you've been in denial about the state of your soul the whole time. Otherwise it wouldn't be as dark. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's the first pain. And if you think about it, that's the first pain we're all feeling, isn't it, as we start this process. Oh, I want my addictions met and I can't. That's usually the first pain. We don't usually skip straight to repentance, do we? <laughs> it's a good idea, but the, the, our earth life being as it has been thus far, uh, be growing up with usually most of us, especially in the Western world, with a lot of addiction, the first thing we realise when we start to open up to the truth and the truth about our existence and the soul is, oh, I can't get my addictions met, that hurts. And usually that hurts more than me realising, oh, I hurt Pierre the other day. Usually my pain about my addictions can't get met feels worse in the beginning. Now, as we go on, that changes, as some of you begin to experience. When you feel like, oh, I've hurt someone else, whoa, that feels bad. But often that's because we've started to open up and, if you like, go beyond this first pain of, I can't have everything I want all the time. So this means that... Um this has nothing to do, mercy has nothing to do with, you know, the fact when you are on the natural love path, you could feel, uh, be in a place, I feel good, I feel good about myself, and I'm happy, and I'm unloving, but I don't feel it so much. And when I go, I open myself and I say, I want to feel actually everything I, I'm doing and this and loving. I start feeling bad about myself. And yeah. that's nothing to do with mercy. What you say, that's not the... That's like. more to do with denial and truth. Mm. All right. Do you... Mm -hmm. Yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. So you feel... Are you, is your question that the state you're in on the natural love path, is that merciful? Is that No, mercy? I would say that... My question that is that mercy and then mercy operates in both cases, but I could say, okay, thank you, God, for your mercy, but I still want to feel everything now. Yeah, and okay, I think I'm, I get and then, you now. You know, you know. Yeah, in actual fact, yes. When you're in the, on the natural love path and you're wandering along going, I feel great, everything's wonderful, that is a, as a result of mercy. Because it's in existence, yes. You, sorry, it took me a while to get your point. That's right. Then as we begin to open up, we engage the process for ourselves. So the mercy is still existent. God is still not putting the restrictions upon us. But now we're engaging that process. There's more pain, um, but mercy remains equal through all of it. Yeah. It's like we're we already starting the process that we would go through in the spirit world no is it yes true? yeah definitely definitely and it's a very powerful thing to do to to start it here most people historically have not done that or have done it in a very small way and i suppose aj and i that's our desire to show how you can do it in a big way uh to the point of it one with god but um yeah it's that's right you're starting to engage what usually happens for people when they enter the spirit world and that is Rita here today. Yeah. So can we just, I know, Deb, you've got your hand up. I'll just go to Rita because last week, remember, you said to me about um, that you think we, you were starting to talk about this issue of justice and mercy and you were saying to me that you think it's a good idea to remain on earth as long as you can because there's mercy. No, no, I said the opposite. Oh, I, no, no, I, no. Sorry, I didn't want to talk today at all. <laughs> you don't, you don't so, have to talk. You don't have no, to talk. No, through that chapter I realized so much. It was yeah. the best chapter from the whole book because sometimes you feel really down and depressed and think, what is, all, what is it all for? I might just die and then I am rid of all the spirit attachment and whatnot and then I can progress in that beautiful spirit world. But it's actually a true, a huge gift to be on earth because this is the only place where there is not God's justice. 
there are only God's laws operating. Yes. And the only place where is God's justice is in the spirit world. And on earth is only God's mercy. Yes. And it says also in the book, it would be not just, it would be un injustice. It would be unjust if there would be in the spirit world, additionally to, the, to God's justice, also mercy. Because it would be unjust to those who have suffered. And God's justice is just so brilliant. So it's just, it's just amazing. And Can, it can't yeah. be on earth happening because none of us is God. And none of us can be just. We are always in... Okay, we're going to stop you again. I, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I talked too long. I just get, get, get really into it. Um, I believe we can be just on earth. It just requires us being at one with God. So I don't think it's an impossibility. But something I wanted to raise with you guys was about this issue that you alluded to last week. And you're right. God's mercy is in operation in this way on earth alone. And I, can you see that, that that's almost just? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, so it's, it's not that there's an absence of justice. It's just that mercy is here as a part of God's justice. I see that. Um, because as Deidre pointed out, we're born with so much injury at this time. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to point out was about now, what happens? Yes, we know God's mercy is in operation, but now we also know a great deal about God's justice and God's laws and God's truth. So what happens? And? Um, well, I feel that things change with respons with knowledge comes responsibility, and so the laws then um, become a little tighter and a little tougher, and yeah, yeah. Well, we've we've broken through the process of at least intellectually learning something that many of us have to learn once we enter the spirit world, don't we? Yeah. So immediately that we're given gifts, there's also a sense of responsibility with them, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay, just in response to that, yep, we go to Julianne. Thank you. The repercussions are greater with the knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ignorance no longer um, affords has, us any, yes, uh, any yeah, <laughs> yeah. less leniency. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that's quite a, a profound thing to consider as well. And this idea of we should prolong our earth life because there's more mercy doesn't really apply then, does it? Because actually, we've, as Pierre points out, we've started to engage a process. And uh, if we back out now, we're go we can't really go back to the river in Egypt <laughs> of denial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <Mary. laughs> Lily, are you putting down my... Impeccable humour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm having a rough day again. <laughs> All right. Um, so just on that same theme, anyone? Yep. Alex? I just wanted to ask, is, is that what, when AJ talks about the law of compensation kicking in, is, is that what we're talking about? In what regard? Um, I might be way off here, but uh, at times I felt like he, he's saying the law of compensation is already kicking in for us while we're alive. Is that is that? It's always in operation, yeah. definitely. So it's the, just we're not feeling it. Yes. Right. The law of compensation is always in operation, yeah. and that's as Rita pointed out. God's justice isn't in operation, but all of his laws are. So that means every time I act in disharmony with love, there is a compensation upon my soul. And those things will be accounted for as I pass through the mists, but, they, but they're already there within me. And this is this opportunity then that we alluded to with Pierre, where, ah, oh, we could start to be sensitive to it already. And in a way, great, hey? <laughs> it means we're going to start to... to lessen the compensation we have to pay actually because the pain is a feedback mechanism yeah yeah there's other ways we can circumvent it though isn't there 
we know about other laws where we can circ circumvent the law of compensation. What are they, Alex? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So activating the law of repentance, which means what? So I'm just drawing a blank. That's all right. Moment. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Anyone else? Joy? Um, repentance is wanting to make it right. So I'm willing to feel the grief that I've caused others and, um, and really feel my, the, the pain that I've caused others. And I want to make it right with them, so I want their forgiveness, and I need to do that before I ask God's forgiveness. Yep. 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 Oh, there's something. Yeah. yeah, that's all right. There's a bit more to it. How does it, how does it differ, I suppose I'm asking, how does the law of compensation differ from the law of repentance? Oh, okay, so the law of compensation is going to act upon our soul right from the beginning yep. and, and take a long, long time. Whereas the law of repentance is God's gift to us, actually, yep. to be able to bypass that and process that um, and seek forgiveness both from our brother and from God uh, as quickly as we like, pretty much. So how come it's quick and slow? How come it's quick and slow? I guess one's conscious and one's not conscious. One, we're using our will. Our will. We're Aren't engaging we? our will Yeah, to do we're that. engaging our will. We're saying, yes, God, yeah. I want to know the pain that I've mm. caused another. I want to find the cause inside mm. of me. I want to never do it again. And so we engage in it. It doesn't mean mm. it's painless. In fact, it's quite mm. painful. Mm. But the law of compensation just is so slow because we're not actively engaged in it. Mm. We're still having to account for all of the pain mm. that we have, you know, caused to other people and towards ourselves even mm. in, in harmful things. Mm. When we engage the, the repentance process, then we say, I'm actually willing to feel all of that pain. Mm. And we, we usually say, I don't even care how long it's going to take. Mm. And ironically then it takes less, it time. Takes less time. Yeah. Um, just on the bigger question of the mercy and so on, yep. I, feel like, um, I feel like now that I'm aware of God's laws and how they, how they enact... Um, that once I have that awareness, plus I have the desire and the willingness to want to grow closer to God, I'd almost prefer the world not to have mercy in it, like, because I'd rather have the direct feedback and, um, and feel the pain because yeah. that's just going to be a motivator. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like the, I can see why on the earth, because as um, Deirdre said, we don't get perfect parents, um, but... So it would be different. Like if the world was a place where everybody, everyone got all this information to start with. Yeah. Um, what would it be like, do you think? Well, if everyone had this... In, well, firstly, they'd have, to, uh, they'd have to want, they'd have to desire to, to grow to God. There'd still be the issue of will, wouldn't there? Is the issue of free will. Yeah. But if there was no mercy and they had the issue of free will and they had the information, then the compensation would, would act much more quickly yes. without mercy. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes it's tempting, isn't it, to yes. think, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> but that's maybe just me looking for the fast track. <laughs> well, then there's that, that quality of integrity as well, isn't there, that we, you know, we don't develop as much as... I don't know if I'm using the right word by using integrity, but this idea that, you know, we're not responding to a, a penalty, we're responding because we desire. So... Uh, we'd miss out on that if there was always compensation. Do you see what... I, my feeling about that is that um, that would make my desire stronger. The compensation? Yes. Yes. Mm. And the, the truth is we can't really develop integrity in a pure way unless it's from our will. But um, I don't know, I see a certain quality in people who actively choose to change, in all of you guys who choose to change without the compensation smacking you in the face. Like I think that takes some integrity already and it grows as you go on. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back to Jen. I have a feeling in my heart about love, that love is like a force, for want of a better way, and that when you experience love, then there's desire because love helps you to be sensitive. You just become sensitive with love. And yes. Then some, I don't know how to break it down without getting too intellectual, 
But I've got a feeling inside of me that as love grows, I'm going to want to. I'm going to want to repent. I'm going to want to know more. I'm going to want to find God. I'm well, going to want to grow. So let's relate this then to our second, your second homework question. Do you remember what it was, Jen? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who remembers what your second homework question was? <laughs> Deirdre? <laughs> um, uh, oh, I've got it written down, but it's like um, the difference between uh, repentance and forgiveness and what it involves for us or what it involves for other people and how does God fit into the picture? Yeah, yeah. So it's about how does, how does repentance and forgiveness act in our relationships with our brothers and sisters, but also in our relationship with God? How do those things marry up? Yeah. All right, who wants to share their reflections on that? Luli. Oh, hang on, I didn't have time to read it before I put my hand up. Um, um, I think it was said, it was talking about how you have to have... Um, you can't go to God until you've reconciled it with your brother. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it was talking about the fact that you have to have, you know, fully repented and, and attempted to rectify your unloving behaviour before you're actually properly, properly repentant and then you can feel God's forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> also, I wanted to say I've actually got a graph to prove this from our soul team experiments. Oh, <laughs> tell me, tell me. Um... Well, one aspect of it is looking at the relationship, like how strong your relationship with is God um, versus how strong your relationship is with others. Do you others. want to draw it? No. And <laughs> uh, no. Oh, all right. <laughs> Label. And to interpret? Okay, um, I'll do it from over here. Uh, yeah, so the, the better your relationship with God on the x-axis, the better your relationship with others. And part of that is repentance. Yes. So it's scientifically proved now. Awesome. <laughs> cool. I guess for me it was already scientifically proven, but, but I love that you've done an experiment about it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, let's go back to the text because he, he quotes a Bible reference in here, doesn't he? Who looked up in their Bible? Jane did. It's on page 79 of the printed book. The penalties enforced by that justice are for wrongs committed against your fellow man. So against your fellow man, such sins must be redeemed. They are never forgiven, for no one, not even God, has power to forgive a trespass against any other than himself, such being contrary to his own law. When the penalty for sins against his fellow has been righteously discharged, then the repentant soul has the power to ask forgiveness for his sin against God, which is always freely granted, but it is requisite that he first be reconciled to his brother." For only he that clean hands that has clean hands and a pure heart can ascend to the presence of God where Christ will secure his full remission. Okay, so let's let's really talk about this this paragraph in depth. Lily has summarized it beautifully for us, but there's a lot in there, Barbara. Um a little bit of confusion on discussion with some people. They've stated um, from this that um, you um, the steps you know you seek um, you have awareness yourself you go to your brother you seek forgiveness and then you can go to God um, and some of them some, some people have said to me that you have to have forgiveness from your brother before you can go to God and your brother doesn't have to forgive you as long as you're being willing to yeah so okay Thank it's you. the action of your seeking his forgiveness yes, because. He that's, doesn't have to forgive you. No. He's got his own free will. That's the will. exercise of his own will. Yeah. But remember we're dealing with what's in our own soul. So if I have done a harm against you, if I'm truly repentant, I would come to you and seek your forgiveness. Now, I would also be unattached to whether you actually forgive me or not. Mm. 
that's if I was in a true state of repentance, I would say, Barbara, you may never forgive me, but I, I really want to ask for your forgiveness and let you know how sorry I feel for everything that I did mm. and all of these things. Now, that would indicate, if that was a soul-felt feeling, that would indicate my repentance. Now, you would be free to say, no, I don't forgive you. Yes, I forgive you, whatever. But the condition of my soul would be such that I'm repentant and then I can receive God's forgiveness. He's already forgiven me. He's already me, forgiven, yes. But he's, he's created our souls such that it's only when I reach a certain condition in my soul that I'm able to feel that forgiveness. Mm. Mm. That was the, the other point. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So does that make sense to everyone? Um, he, he's already forgiven all of us all of the time, but he, in order for us to experience that feeling, there must be a set of conditions within my own soul. And so I limit the experience of God's love and God's forgiveness while I'm unrepentant and also while I remain in a state of not forgiving another. Both, both ways it works. Obviously, the... I limit it even more. If you can say we can receive God's love, um, I don't know if you, you guys are all familiar with the analogy AJ has of like the, the bottle that's full of error, you know, and we let a little bit out and God's love can come into that amount. We let a little bit more out and God's love can come into that amount. When we hit these issues around repentance uh, where we've harmed other people, this is the majority of the, the error that's within our soul. So if we're resistant around that, it's going to limit quite a lot how much love can enter us. When it comes to issues around forgiveness, it's a little bit different. Because there's harm done to us. And God can still love us quite an extent while we've been harmed. But until we're really ready to forgive, we can never be at one with God. We can never receive his love to the full extent that, that, we, that that's possible for our soul. Yeah. Um, if we go up the back here and then across to Angela with the other mic. Yeah. Just if you keep your hand up, yeah. I'm not used to this. This is um, a bit difficult. Yeah, but that's uh, okay. big mouth and two left feet. <laughs> but I just but like I think to that's share, me. <laughs> I'd just like to share with you the experience that this book did for me this week. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know. I'll try not to muck it, muck it. You know, middle it up. But I went to bed on Saturday evening, and. Um, I had this enormous dream and this dream was about 55 years ago of one of my errors mm -hmm. and it was so powerful that I could not take no notice of it. I had to really look at it yep. and it was about uh, taking something that didn't belong to me when I was young and this was to help me further pay off my father's debts that were in my name and it was so strong and powerful I couldn't neglect it and yet I felt so afraid and so ashamed and so guilty it took me a day and I started the process of my commitment to God mm -hmm. to undo this error and it took me a while, but I found the person that it was attributed to, which I didn't even know was alive. Wow. And um, we had a great conversation. And uh, uh, after that, the relief and the joy that was there and the warmth that, that came into my beingness was just enormous. So it was a, a hard, very hard process to yeah. go through and confront, but the desire for God was greater than that. That's beautiful, and, uh, Phil. Yeah. And that's what this book is doing and I can feel it in all the conversations. So. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm sure you had to face quite a few emotions to, to get to the point of Absolutely. contacting that person. Absolutely, yes, yeah. yes. And it was yeah. great just to be on my own now without disturbances from around me to be able to uh, work, work through it. Just go it. through it, yeah. Because yes. so yeah. you, you're living out in the bush now. Absolutely, so can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah thank so. you for sharing that story. It's beautiful. Yeah, awesome. And? 
um, yeah, I was just f- sitting here feeling the mechanics of of our soul and God's soul where, you know, we can only feel that forgiveness when we actually have fully repented. Yep. It's quite absolutely mind-boggling, really. But um, my question is, um, so like receiving God's love, yep. we can receive forgiveness in increments as well. Is that correct? Like as we... Yeah, we can feel it feel, in increments. Sorry. Yes. Sorry, yeah. 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 So it's a little different... Well, no, actually, it probably isn't that different to the receipt of divine no, love. Yeah. Because God's loving us all of the That's time, right. but we can only That's receive right. his yes. love yes. Um, when we have a certain condition yeah. within our yeah. soul. And if you think about it, forgive, his forgiveness is almost a quality of his love, That's isn't right. it? That's and so, right. it's the same. Yeah, yeah. There, there has to be this set of conditions, yes. the humility, yes. the openness, yes. the desire for truth. Yeah. And yeah. if you think about repentance, yeah. you have to really want the truth of what happened in that process, don't yes. you? Yeah. And, and be willing to face it, just as in Phil's story, you know, to face, wow, mm. I can't avoid this. Mm. If I want God, I'm going to look at. I'm going to have to look at this very thing that your guides and your own soul beautifully brought you during the night. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it, God's forgiveness really is. Could it be said that it's God's love? Just as simple as that. I think is it's a quality, a quality yeah, of His love. Yeah, yeah, like, there's yeah. many different qualities in yeah. the way in yeah. God's love, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Deb had a hand up there for a long time. Are you, yeah. you, yep. the, the question got answered. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put your hand back up if it comes back. <laughs> yeah. If we go back to Jen again. In the end part of your quote where it says, can ascend to the presence of God where Christ will secure his full remission, could you explain... Why is the reference to Christ and receiving or securing a full remission there? Is that a reference to religion, how religion perceives Christ? Yes, I feel it is. I feel that this is a religious reference, possibly relating to the medium's religious background. But, I mean, I could interpret it in a divine love way, but I, I don't feel that that's the way... I feel it is actually a reference to Jesus Christ rather than a condition of being Christed and I don't. So is it a truth or not that Christ intercedes or is it an actual place? Can you explain what you mean by intercedes? Well, in most of the doctrines that are out there in the world, they really believe that God, uh, that Jesus' purpose, his sole purpose, or one of his main purposes, was to intercede on our behalf. In other words, he speaks for us to God in place of us being able to go to God ourselves. Be that a truth or an error, that's what's actually out there in the doctrine. Yeah. And so, can I go? Yeah. Is that your question, though? That does God, inter- does Jesus intercede? Well, yeah, one of them. But, yeah, but I you think can I'm answer f- that question, can't you? I think I'm feeling now that that isn't a truth, that even though it's doctrinally out there and commonly believed that God, is, that God put Christ on earth to be the intercessor, you know, like to be... Well, this is why I asked you to define intercede, because I know that there's that... I, I don't know my Christian doctrine, uh, earthly, or yeah, they, I don't want to know it. Again, they truly, that be- well. they truly believe out there that um, we've got to accept gro- Christ into our heart and we go to Christ first and then Christ goes to God for us. Yeah, and this is, where, this is why I asked you to explain it because there's some truth and there's a lot of error in that understanding. You don't need an intermediary with God. Is, any, does any, is anyone unclear about that? No, you definitely do not need an intermediary with God. You yourselves can have a personal relationship with God. At no time, if you go, Jesus, would you please tell God for me? Or could you stand up for me with God? He'll go, you need to talk to God. 
that's always going to be the case. Now, understand out there, that is, like, pretty wild. A lot of people don't think that that's possible in it from a soul, from their heart perspective. However, there is a truth in that God did allocate a soul to be a messenger of God's truth. And in that way, if you go to that messenger and learn everything you can from that messenger, you will grow closer to God. Do you understand what I mean? I do, I do understand quite clearly what you're saying. Yeah. And, but like for all the people in the world who will get to eventually hear this. <laughs> so, Jen, am I to understand that you're asking a loaded question for the benefit of the masses and not for your own soul? No, no. It, I really did want to know why um, it makes this kind of reference when in I felt book. in my heart that um, although I value the word, the truth that Christ brings, Jesus brings... <laughs> um, You're getting a bit stressed out with yeah, your religious yeah. roots there, Jen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that that's just a, that is a Christian reference that um, has come through the medium. That is my feeling, yeah. Alwyn? One of the things that Neil pointed out to me that <clears throat> when he's having this discussion, he's actually having it with... Not Kushna, because he's gone up. Um, yes. He's having it with a companion, and yes. like they're in the second sphere. And I'm, I'm just, you know, we just talked about mm. this guy doesn't know everything. That's this right. This is his yeah. idea of how it is, and he talks about yep. things like punishment too, yes. which you yes. know. So he's not fully in the loop yet. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like um, his friend, was her name Helen at the beginning, who greeted him, she wasn't quite in the loop yet either, was she? She was saying things from where she was at in terms of her progression. And, um, yeah, I, I agree that, that this guy is just telling him what he understands right now. Yeah, yeah, good point, Alan. Yeah. Okay, who else had their hand up just there? No, she doesn't want it? No? Okay. All right, Suze. This is a kind of back to 101 question because yep. I feel like I should know, but I'm really not clear, about how the law of compensa compensation and the law of attraction interface and, and how they're different. Okay. So the way I see it is that the law of attraction is always bringing to us truth. So that's truth about the, our existence, God's existence, the world we live in, um, truth you could, like loving truth, as well as truth about the error that's in our soul, truth about our soul condition, um, truth about the way everything operates in God's universe. All of those things. The law of attraction is constantly bringing us those things. The law of compensation, um, in my humble understanding of it, is that it is, the, it is the penalty upon our soul for what, what, has, what we have done to harm another person and ourselves often to harm God's creation. Any, any unloving act we've taken, the immediate, there is an immediate um, effect upon our soul painful one, a damaging one. So um, whereas the law of attraction is the messenger of truth, giving us all kinds of truth all of the time and often sig signalling to us this error that's within us, the law of compensation is strictly about God bringing, trying to, because this is the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, the operation of mercy and justice and all of those things. What if they didn't exist? What if there was no justice? What would life be like? Anywhere. Anywhere. Pandemonium. Pandemonium, yeah. Anarchy, Anarchy. yep. Yeah. And what would we miss out on? Yeah, God's love. But what does justice give us? What does it teach us? It, yeah, it teaches us about love and ultimately God 
and God's love. So um, uh, the way I see the law of compensation is God trying to teach us about love, 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 and we're not engaging our will. Once we repent, wow, God can teach us heaps about love because we're activating our will. But I feel that the operations of justice and the law of compensation and the law of repentance are all designed to teach us about love. Does that make sense? So that's, that's the loving operation of the law. And that's why if we become sensitive to the compensation or the consequences upon our soul, we'll quickly learn about love. Yeah. Whereas the law of attraction, like we often talked about it, talk about it in negative terms, but there's many positive ways that it acts in our life all of the time as well. Like many of you guys went, sat down and went, I just want to know the truth of the world, you know? <laughs> and suddenly you, someone said, here's a DVD, you might be into it, yeah, or whatever happened. But um, that's also a part of the law of attraction acting upon pure things within your soul. Or maybe, yeah, yeah. Many things like that. So the law of compensation is almost like a debit balance in the soul. It's like yeah. you've, you've got appointments with things that, that you have to atone for. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Kelly showed me a kind of a diagram that she did synthesising all of these ideas before. It was beautiful and creative. But she said, I've got an accounting background. That's why there's a negative here and a positive here. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is kind of like that. It is, it is a... The, what is that? The checks and balances of everything. And, you know, as we've heard in previous chapters, it's very exacting. You know, God sees everything and it doesn't matter, like Kel was saying, you know, sometimes maybe you do something you think, well, no one saw that. Oh, well. Oh, it's, <laughs> well, it's a lot of people, you know, God saw it. And it's, you're never going to get away from this justice. Yeah. Yeah. Does that clear it up, Suze? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel for me there's a lot more to sit to get really, really clear, but that's a really good start. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, who else, who else has questions about this? Alex. I just, the more I reflect on this, the more I feel that I actually have no excuse in saying that if AJ Merrick didn't come along, that I somehow... You know, I can play dumb around this, yeah. Because I, I feel like my entire life, I've, I've had, you know, God's law of attraction showing me things. It, so many times, I, I remember walking down the street and seeing someone that I've harmed, yeah. And just putting my head down and going, oh no, not that person. I can't, you know. Yeah. And so I feel, and I had that often. So it was constantly being shown to me. Yeah. You know, so I feel it's a little bit of a cop out to say, you know, well, we're not getting this information, then I'm just unaware of all this. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because like we said earlier, God's designed everything to bring us to truth. Yeah. And um, and just because you meet AJ and Mary doesn't mean that you're going to come to truth either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. There, there really is no... Um, you can't say, oh, well, I wasn't aware. Because I think as we said in earlier chapters... No, you're always being tried to be made aware because that's a loving thing to yeah. make you aware, to have that little pull on your soul and go, oh, there's something happening here. Oh, oh this doesn't mm. feel good. God's designed it that way so that we learn love. Yeah. I just see that, the, you know, absolutely everything that in creation that God has done, you know, it has so many beautiful purposes, but you could narrow every one of them down in, to one commonality, and that is to teach his children about love. It's just everything, um, every, the essence of every law, the essence of every part of creation around us, it's all designed to teach us about love, which is ultimately to teach us how, like, how to love, how to connect to his love, you know, all, all of these aspects of love, um, how to love ourselves, all of those things, mm -hmm. which if you think about it, what an incredible gift, just that, wow, it's not just me here alone. No, God's created everything here to teach me about love. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If you just pass behind you, Alex, to Jennifer. Can I comment more about mercy? Please. <clears throat> you had said something about the significance of how on earth we, we aren't cordoned off according to our soul condition. Yes. 
And I feel this tremendous gratitude for that because what I realize is that if we were sectioned off, we would not have anywhere near the compassion towards other groups of people and their suffering as a result of their choices or even just... Or as the result of our choices. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I just, I just, I'm just so grateful that, um, that I can associate with people that are so in much better condition than me, yeah. as well as people that are in poor condition and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And it also relates to forgiveness, too, because if we're able to have more compassion for other people, then it seems easier to forgive, to forgive, you know, the errors in ourselves <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. other people. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that just seemed really important to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very uh, wealthy experience, this earth experience, isn't it? Like we are given a lot in order to learn. Yeah. From... from from the moment we are conceived, there's so much there for it to help us learn all about who we are, the will we have, and God, like I just said. So, yeah. And, and um, AJ and I had some really interesting discussions about this idea that the law of compensation isn't in, in effect on earth. Because both of us have a lot of pain, I think, about the fact that suffering is perpetuated and perpetuated and perpetuated because there's injury and then born into injury. And, you know, for us, both of us, it's a big pain. Like, you know, how can we stop this? And this idea that, well, what if the law of compensation was in effect now? But then we would miss the mercy and the, the opportunity. And and as, like, Deirdre's point that started us out, I think, is, is very, you know, beautiful in that we were already being we would be punished for the sins of the father before we had even time to understand that we who we were or you know that we had a will so um yeah i see there's so much love in this merciful place that we're in and the fact that we can interact with so many of god's sons and daughters all at once yeah. and if there was total justice like in the spirit world yeah we would just be so afraid to, to try things. I mean, exactly. one of the beautiful yeah. things about being here is there's not a huge consequence if I mess up. You <laughs> yeah. know, if I make a big mistake, you know, yeah. I'm not, you know, I was going to say damn to hell, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Well, I have the opportunity, don't I? There's time for me to recognize, whoa, yeah. hang on, that really sucked. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that or, whoa, that had some big consequences. Whereas if justice was immediate, bam, I'd be like, whoa, this must, you know, that's it for me for 50 years till I work through that one. Yeah, the time thing was such a gift. I mm. really got that because yeah. we actually have the time to, to generate our own desire yeah. to, to heal and yeah. grow towards love yeah. instead of, you know, having it imposed on us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And Kelly and I had a discussion before the group and that was one of her beautiful... Wasn't it that a feeling that you had? It was so beautiful that this is part of the compassion in the mercy that we are able to... In engage the mistakes did, did you want to, yeah is that what it was yeah we can engage the mistakes and learn before there's this big you know scales coming upon us and restriction and yeah 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 go ahead. yeah i think it's just my own um, emotions too about making mistakes yeah. and, and from a child you know and being able to sit here in the group and make mistakes and just yeah, it's applicable right now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's such a big childhood injury that I can see a lot of us have. Yeah, and as Luli said in the beginning, you know, yeah. God's giving us the opportunity to do things that often our parents taught us to be afraid of. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. cool. Thanks. All right, Jason had his hand up there. Do you still have it up? Yes. Yep. And who had their hand up on this side? Yeah. Someone else? No? Did I hear you correctly say that the law of compensation is not working down here, but it's fully enacted in spirit world, is it? No, I'm saying it's, it's in operation now. Okay. From forever. Yep. From the moment of and that we start to use our own will, the law of compensation is in operation. Okay, it's the full extent of... 
Yep. It's yep. just that it's just that we we're not perceiving it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I should have been clearer. Oh, yeah. Okay. If the law of compensation in its external operation, you know, through its limitation on our environment, through the um, restriction that we had to, you know, when we go to the spirit world, the law of compensation is acting to restrict our environment, to affect, you know, where we can go, the way we look, all of those things. Um, that It's all very evident. That exists while we're here on earth, but we have the freedom to keep using our will and learn about all of that without being having the external limitation on us. The pain is still within us, within our soul. So it's always in operation on our soul. Let me be clear. Yeah, yep. yeah. Thanks for clarifying that, Jason. That's important. Uh, if we go to Nora behind you. All right. Um... I struggle a bit. I, I find this wonderful, like the justice and the mercy and the forgiveness and how God put everything in place. It's wonderful for us. Yeah. However, we're a minority. And there's so many people um, there that they they have the time, but they don't seem to, I don't know what's, like they're lacking, that they can't actually get there. Where do you mean? Well, they don't want to. They don't have the desire, or basically, because I'm I'm referring to my mother, uh, <laughs> coming back to my yeah, yeah. and um, and there's so many people like her. I mean, look at the world. What much but worse. But Nora, I think you need to everything. be careful here by saying we're a minority because I I I really feel like in the past six months maybe I've begun to engage these processes we're talking about. So I, I think we need to be careful by saying, oh, we're all sitting here having a discussion about this, so this means that we've got it. Oh, I well. feel we're having discussion about this because we need to get it. Yes, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. I so agree. by saying... So it's even hard for us. Myself included in that. <laughs> so which makes it even a, a minor minority, which I'm, I agree with you in that. So what about these other, well, the ones that we're not getting it yet here, which I could be included to in that and um, what, what and do you mean what about them well the, the desire of at least the desire of actually acting doing something having the willingness to to well I said actually that's not true I have the willingness that's why I'm here but um, yeah to have for the ones that don't even have the willingness to to see that they they have errors in themselves, and um, because they had such a horrid, f fearful life, that they, as children, they decided not to look back, and totally uh, conceal those emotions, and hence they just won't go back. Yeah. So I'll just be really straight with you, Nora. I feel that this question is born of a lot of pain that you have in the relationship with your mum and you feel angry with her because she doesn't want to look at the harm that she's done towards you. Um, and I also feel that you yourself are quite resistive to emotionally looking at the harm you've done to other people and you feel angry about having to do that also because you feel like, well, my mum's hurt me, that's the cause of it. Now I've hurt other people but I don't want to have to look at it because my mum caused that in me. I feel compassion for my mum, actually. But I don't... That's why I'm asking the question. What about well, I think these people? But I think... No, I, I feel that the emotion in your question is actually one of... It's a feeling of injustice, which is actually an angry feeling. So maybe if I just let you sit with I that... See, yes, yeah, I yeah. see that... Um, it, <laughs> I see the justice and the beautiful everything that I said at the beginning, but yeah, there is obviously something comes from my error that I. Yeah. Nora, I feel yeah. okay. there's no need to judge it. No, that's you know, fine. this reading this chapter, I think, is great in that it brings up all of our emotions. The reason I wanted to be really straight with you is because we can't kid ourselves about the emotions that come up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm and I'm grateful for that. Yeah really try to model to you guys honesty in what comes up for me as well, you know, because that's the only way we're going to 
grow <laughs> and get closer to God is if we have the courage to really face what's inside of us. And sometimes that's angry feelings and like, oh, this is nice, we're having this discussion about mercy and justice and it's all, yep, technically good, but what about the fact that my mum hurt me and she doesn't want to look at it and now I'm supposed to look at the fact that I've hurt other people and that hurts and it all feels bad because <laughs> sometimes that's the feelings that come up and that's really just the, the top layer, the cracking of the shell that we have to go through to get to the deeper grief. Yeah, and the feeling is the injustice, like that seems like God is not so ju just after all, or his laws are not so just yeah. after all. Yeah, yeah. I see and mean. I think that's why this can be a bit laboured, this chapter as well, because there are a lot of emotions inside of us that oppose the truths that are being spoken about in this chapter. There are for all of us, really, because... <laughs> our lives play them out, you know? Like Kel was very humble and said, yeah, I can see I've still got feelings of wanting revenge in me, you know? And so I feel like reading this opens us, a lot of us, opens us to the truth and we go, oh, wow, that is beautiful. And we can almost have a rush of the truth or um, sit with it for a while and feel some emotions and then go, oh, hang on, I can feel it a bit differently now. But the truth is, like I said we're having this discussion because we need to get it, not because we have. So, um, yeah, if we just stay in that process, I think um, that's the spirit. Thanks. I think I've been trying... To, well, I've been in this process for a while now. I'm still there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. I think it's probably the hardest process that a lot of us will go through to truly look at ourselves. I don't know if there's a much harder process. <laughs> Rob? Yeah, I've got a similar thing running where, um, you know, I've had a lot of mercy shown to me and there's a lot of people I can show mercy to, especially an accident or, you know, one or two injuries coming at me. But the people who consciously, as an adult, perpetrated again and again and again and again against me and others, yeah, that's where I draw the line and I wish God's justice, justice would sort of do something with them. Yep. This yep. is the thing, you know, and yep. I've got... Sitting here, I've been resisting this feeling of, oh, you know, I'm angry about this. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go out and deal with some anger to get on you. to the grief below this, you know. Because yeah. sitting here, I'm just, I've, I didn't have the desire to forgive those people. Yes. But sitting here, it's starting to grow where yeah. I actually do want to now forgive those people. Awesome. But I realise it's going to be a pretty tough process for me yeah. to get to that, you know. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I, I think it's a great point, Robert. It, a lot of us have this feeling like, oh, I can have compassion for that person or I can, you know, I can forgive in this situation or show mercy or whatever. But what about that guy who I know knows what he's doing is wrong and he keeps yeah. doing it and it's hurting me and it's hurting... Or worse, it's hurting other people, it's hurting kids, it's hurting... Mm. How, do I, how do I really, really trust God enough yeah. <laughs> and yeah. want God enough and love God enough and... It's really trust God enough that his justice mm. is going to be um, impartial complete with all of us. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Robert. Okay, if we go to Rose and then to Monique after that. Yeah. I just haven't been keeping an eye on the time. Yeah. I never thought that I would come to the place that this chapter has enabled me to come to and talking about revenge and recognising how utterly revengeful I've always felt towards my mother. But reading this chapter has enabled me to go, yes, she didn't love me, but let's look at what I did to her as a, a, a child growing into teenage years and an adult. And I've been able to go to the place of owning how much I harmed her in that process of revenge towards her. I think her. I have to stop you, though. I'm not sure that that's revenge, Rose. Oh. No. When you're a child and somebody is hurting you yeah. and you don't have a good understanding of your own will these are, and you act out against that, be it in rage or, you know, even in some kind of malicious way, if you're quite young, these are not the issues that I'm drawing to you to repentance on. 
Because very often you have no understanding of your own will. You're reflecting the emotions of other people around you or spirits around you. Or you are just directly acting in self-preservation in a situation where you, you, you cannot get out of. So um, be very careful of going down a route of trying to repent towards your parents before you have forgiven what they have done to you. Mm. Does that make sense to everyone? Because otherwise... Can you, you can say that again? Please? Be very careful of trying to repent what you have done to your parents before you have reached a space of forgiveness with them for what they have done to you. Because inherent in that relationship, you entered it powerless in terms of your own will. You, you know, you were at their mercy. And immediately that they acted on error, there was harm done to you. Now, that is your causal emotions. As an adult or as you grew and had your own will and acted to avoid those causal emotions, this is when you have been unloving and these are the issues to repent about. When you are small, be careful because very often our parents have set that up in us that we were the wrong ones, that we should repent to them, we should say sorry to them, we should, you know, and it actually often is a way of, that they employed to help us, to get us to avoid the pain that we were feeling as a result of their actions. Thank you. And I, I was referring to as, as an adult, like late teens, early yep. adulthood, yep. recognising that I was cruel and horrible back to, I wanted to hurt her. Yep. Like I felt but hadn't wanted to feel inside myself. Yeah. So in this process then, as you're an adult or a teenager, you, now you're becoming sensitive to the fact that, wow, I wanted to hurt my mum. That was a real feeling in me. Now, also be careful here. You can go, whoa, that feels bad. That, I can tell that's not loving. And I feel some pain about that. But remember, when we truly repent, we will find the causal emotional reason why that emotion, we did those things. What emotion was in us. And this will lead us back to how we've been harmed in our childhood by our parents. <coughs> so just, just be careful as you skirt and skate into these processes because they're very, it, when you do it properly, it will be very real and lasting. But there are very many ways we've been taught, usually by our parents or by our environment, to avoid the actual pain that was done to us by our parents. And that's why I just pulled you up pretty rapidly because, yeah. Thank you. No worries. All right. A few hands went up in response to that. Oh, Moni, do you want... Can we come back to you after this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, who had their hand up? Was it Renee? Yeah. If we go to Renee and then Pierre. Yeah. Mary, so... Um I've got this, this is still intellectual for me. I haven't dropped it in my heart at all. I don't feel I have this whole repentance thing down at all. So, when you say that with, as a child, yeah. what is, um, so how do you forgive? <laughs> so, the way that you forgive is being the willing, depth in the heart, I mean. yeah, being willing, the true forgiveness, being willing to feel that pain, the hurt that was inflicted upon us, all of it. That's pretty overwhelming. It is. That's like this is why it's a toss up whether we should do a study group on forgiveness or on repentance, <laughs> because um, they're both pretty big processes. But it's the core of really what AJ has been teaching you for four years. I've been trying to yeah. get to that feeling constantly, and I just feel like such a I've got bad person, wrong person, wrong always oh, lots of wrongness. Yeah. Feel wrong being here. I feel you know because I can't get to that forgiveness, and it's. I tap into that with my mum. Can you see, though, that, that bad person, wrong person, judgment, that's all messages that have been given to you from your environment as you grow up, so from parents or people around you, and they're the very things that we need to start challenging, like, okay, this didn't come from me, this came from outside of me, and it hurts to be made to feel like I'm a bad person or I'm a wrong person all the time. And there's your beginning of finding the the hurts 
the things we need to forgive. The main problem, and it's similar to why Paul rose up, is often we're retelling ourselves the same messages and crying about them, and that keeps us in the injured state. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's in my, that's gone over my head then. But uh, <laughs> for me, it's like d- generational though. When I tap into that, I'm looking at is that divine love or is that like feeling into that? Where am, where am I at when I'm feeling this? Or is this just natural love and I'm just feeling how my mum felt, if that makes sense? <laughs> like I, I, ta- I tapped into a bit of that with my mum and felt compassion for her just recently yeah. and felt like, oh, I could really, you know, speak to her honestly around some things. Yeah. But I feel there's a depth, such a depth, and it just it's ongoing and it's so yeah. huge, overwhelming yeah. and, like, yeah. you know, generational. And I feel my grandma and then I feel my grandma. You know, it's just yeah. so much. And, you know, one of the, the difficult things when we're sensitive, and all of us are sensitive as children... But particularly, you know, for some of us, I know for me, I, I have been so attuned to how everyone else around me feels. So I can tell you my mother's pain and my dad's pain and my grandma's and my, you know, I, can, I know them because I felt them. And the bit that I missed was feeling me. <laughs> and this is, the, this, is, this is the other red flag, you know. If you find yourself being able to tap into their pain before your own... It's usually because you've been trained to do so and this will be a major block in you getting to your own. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, So, Ren, I feel for you, be careful, yeah, that you're not... Remember, weeks and weeks ago I talked about the the world's definition of what it is to forgive and the divine love past definition of what it is to forgive. And I said the world's definition of what it is to forgive is to understand... And then, you know, push it to the side. Understand them. Basically, deny what it was for me. Understand how, how what their, um, their motivations were. Have compassion, compassion for them. And then forget about it. And I made the joke until Christmas time when you see them. And then you go, oh, they're really bugging me again. But hang on. I'll understand them. And then I'll, yeah. And, the, and okay, I've, and now I'm back in the state of forgiveness. And that's why it never works because it's all, it's all in kind of an intellectual thing that bypasses your own soul. Now, when you get to your own soul, you go, whoa. Yeah, what, how mum treated me in those situations and, you know, from these times in my life, that really hurt. And... For me, I can tell you why she did it and I have more compassion for her than I do for me in that situation. And this is developing... Remember, God, we, we want to come to see ourselves as God sees us. And part of that, God has immense compassion for what's happened to us in our childhood. And we need to start, you know, resensitizing to ourselves rather than everyone else. Yeah. And, and that is always the thing I've struggled with is... is me, yeah, like finding me in amongst chaos, Everyone. and finding me, yeah, and loving me amongst the chaos. Yeah. So. so that's the first step to being able to forgive, friend, is <laughs> tapping into that you, because Thanks. yeah. Thanks, yeah, Mary. No worries. Thank you, <laughs> Jason. Just to add to that, you know, that feelings of unjust of how I've been treated. Like, I, I remember observing my father beating my younger brother with a dead chicken to teach him a lesson. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and he was only like four years old. Wow. And, um, and I confronted my father about that at my brother's wedding and he had no memory of it. So yeah. that's a real block too around my own feelings of, um, you know, always wanting that love. Yeah. Um, but my father, you know, not being present, yeah. checked out a bot in a rage. Yeah. He, yeah. he actually has no memory of, of doing that. So it's, yeah. for me, I feel the only way out is to connect with God or... Yeah. No. Yeah, because often uh, and I know for me as well, this we want validation from around us before we'll feel our pain. So you, when dad says oh, I don't even remember it, then little Jason's like, "Man, where do I go with this pain because it's in me?" But I just want someone to say, "Yeah, I did that and it was wrong." And this is the other challenge we have is honoring our own pain and saying, "No, I know it's real because it's in me." Yeah. Sounds like a fully traumatic experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Die. Just talking about that pain of what's been done to us. Um, just 
lately I've been noticing I'm getting more in touch with those pains. And then what I notice I've been doing is I go, oh, my God, I've done this to my son and I've mm. done this to other people. Yeah. And then so I go into like this thing about trying to go into this repentance and then I think, Am I just trying? Am I also pulling myself out of? Def, oh, and yes. I feel. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And because this is the other thing that we're taught by the world at large to do, isn't it? Don't feel your pain because what have you done? You know, don't feel what they did to you because aren't you just as bad? And and then everyone gets to avoid what they've done. The person who hurt you and you, you know, we all get to avoid everything. Yeah. What we need to do is say, no, I was hurt and that hurts, and be be brave enough to grieve that and then also to acknowledge what we've done to other people but it's almost like you have to be willing to do the first thing otherwise you use the second thing as a get out clause for the first thing yeah because I realized I'm so full of guilt yeah I'm so guilty and it's like god I have to really feel about how guilty I've been made to To feel feel. as well absolutely yeah 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 thanks Di uh, just just on that point, thanks Mary, it's a great point and I've been pretty remiss about it as well and it actually um, really hit me this morning reading um, the last couple of pages again about um, when at the very end the, the audience was so um, happy to see these people relieved of their pain. Yeah. And it made me realise that um, it put up the great grief that I felt so alone as a child, like suffering. And we all have, I know, that's yeah. what I'm bringing up because we all suffered in such aloneness, yeah. thinking nobody noticed, nobody cared, and especially yeah. when God wasn't really taught. Yeah. So um, it's just, it was pretty, pretty overwhelming how much people care. Yeah. And yeah. we have been observed, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, and you know what I, what I find, Deb, has happened for me is because I've grown up feeling so alone um, and because when I've expressed myself I've felt judged or put down or whatever, I've perpetuated my own loneliness. I haven't reached out to people. I haven't presented my real self. I haven't just been me because I've been so fearful of what happened in my childhood. And that only perpetuates our sense of being alone. We can't ever feel connected to each other let alone God if we're not willing to just be ourselves and if you think about that that's the essence of our relationship with God isn't it when we want humility and we want the truth of who we are God's there Um, and it's it's an analogy for even our relationships with each other that um, unless we're willing to be ourselves we, we never feel connected to each other and for me one of the the big feelings is this loneliness that is my whole life because this sense of being alone that came from childhood I've perpetuated for myself. Yeah, thanks for bringing up. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, If we go to the back to Jennifer. Mary, when you're unable to forgive, is that an angry place? Does that come from a place of anger? Yes. Well, if you think about it, if you think about, um, remember Renee asked me, how do you actually forgive? It's when you release the, the, the feeling of the pain that's been done to you as a child. Now, what does AJ usually call that? Grief. And what kind of emotion does it constitute? A causal emotion. So once that's released from us, we're able to forgive. So if you think about five-year-olds, they do this all the time, don't they? Something happens with mum and dad, and if they're allowed, that's not kind or caring, mum's in a rush and she's touchy with the kids, and if the child's allowed to cry about it and get it out, then they're back feeling trusting and loving of mum again, often. Yeah? So, so that's how we forgive. By releasing that. But it's not just that alone. It's plus a desire to love. <laughs> you, you have to have that desire to love. Usually that's what gets us there as well. <laughs> but they're the two things together. So if I pray to God for the desire to love, 
the persons in my life that have done the most damage to me, then that's the way to unblock the, the anger inside of me? Well, is, no. So I think the way to unblock the anger inside of you is to... Yes, your desire might lead you to a place where you are willing to own and have and honour your own anger, Jen. So not act it out, not punish people with it, not um, keep yourself to yourself, not any of those things, but really have your own anger. And if you think about it, this is a place where you feel quite afraid of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. So when you really are willing to have your own anger for little Jen because what happened wasn't good and you feel the pain of, you know, you let yourself physically have it out, bashing something, screaming about it, but it's, it's all about how you feel. When you're willing to do that, then the anger will leave you. And that's when I'll be able to forgive? Well, no, what's the other layer that comes between anger and your causal emotion? Fear. Fear. So what's the process you're going to have to go through in order to forgive? Completely embrace being so fearful. Completely embrace all of those emotions, yeah. And so, want the truth. So where does forgiveness fit, in, fit into the equation? Does it just come or...? Usually, if, if there is this desire to love, which I feel in you, and uh, keep in mind, while you're angry, you're not desiring to love the people that, you, that have harmed you because you're angry at them. But if once you're willing to own and feel this anger for yourself, I feel your inherent desire to love surface, will surface for you. And if you're willing to feel all of those emotions and they're gone, then you'll naturally forgive them. There'll be nothing, there'll be no wedge. Remember last week we talked about the wedges? There'll be no wedge between you and them. Because at the moment all these emotions create a wedge. So if in that angry process... Um, as an as an adolescent or early, uh, you know, like twenty, I was mm -hmm. actually between sixteen and twenty. I perpetrated harm towards others that caused death, like abortions and stuff. Yep. And that comes from an angry place, but it also comes from the injuries in childhood. Mm -hmm. How does God's law of mercy and justice work when? A life's been taken. Well, in the same way it operates in all other instances, and that is the law of compensation is acting upon your soul from the moment you take the unloving act. Um, because at that stage you were avoiding the causal emotion that was already within you. You had your own will developed by the time you're 16. So you're using your will... In opposition, to, in avoidance of your fear, you, you're in anger, you're using it in opposition How to your fear. How does consciousness come into it? Because at, at 16, I didn't know. You know, like, I didn't know it what had happened. It doesn't matter. So, we've all got a conscience then that tells us right from wrong. Yeah, remember a few weeks ago we talked about this issue of conscience in the group? And we talked about how there's a lot of... Uh, well, we all basically inherently have a sense of, as Sue's pointed out, natural love. And it's only people who are born into very, very... Uh, with parents who are extremely detuned from a sense of their own conscience that they may not be born with an inherent sense of right and wrong. But even then, because the law of attraction is in operation, they would be given the opportunity to, to understand what's right and wrong before they reach a, an age where they're going to exercise their will. Do you remember we talked about that? We talked about it in terms of racism. Yeah. So I just feel I don't want to labour this point too much because we've already answered the question a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara? Um, I just got a feeling that um, Jen was really asking about um, how does God's um, um, laws work on in this situation. And in the abortion talk with um, AJ, 
he clearly um, laid out on the table there that um, God's laws are perfect and loving in all aspects and that everybody involved in that person's condition to make that decision wears responsibility for the action taken, whether yes. it be the parents, um, the environment, religion, the politics of the country or whatever it might be or the beliefs, beliefs of people around you, that that compensation goes to everybody evenly as it's... Um, as much as they've been involved exactly. in the creation yeah. of the event. Yes, and that's Absolutely, one of the beauties Barbara. of God's yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, laws in practice. <laughs> Beautifully put, yes, yeah. So is that clear again? Yeah, yeah. Pierre, then we need to finish, I think. Yes, there is a p uh, passage that is um, very interesting to me in terms of, uh, yeah, I've been feeling and I think it's generally uh, shared on earth that um, if, if there is a God, why so much injustice? Because it feels like, it feels like, um, Free will is not loving when you look at what's happening on earth and how people can kill and make wars and all that stuff. But then then I learn it's mercy in operation behind that. It's yeah. just free will with mercy and and the loving aspect is a teaching. So but I just yeah. It's, so yes, there is a God and very loving God, but yeah, you must learn about mercy and and, and your and own free will. will to understand yeah. that is just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the passage that you? Um, on the printout, uh, it's on page sixty-eight, and it's. I don't know on the other book, but. What does it start with? Uh, no, this attribute cannot be applied to such an undeveloped condition. What man could be found wild enough to imagine that it is. Is not rather the absence of justice so manifest as to be used for an argument against the existence of God, while it has become a proverb among the nations that villainy mm -hmm. is a heir of fo to fortune, but honesty marries miss. Yeah. You remember this place? Yes, yeah. yes, I do. Thanks. An though. argument against the existence of God. No, it feels unjust here. Yeah, it's like when everyone looks around and go, <laughs> goes up, oh, the whole world's stuffed up, that's because of God. And then when, when things go well, that's because of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did well. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really about the, the idea of will, isn't it? And as you said, understanding our will. I, I have to reread it, Pierre, to go into. Yeah. So do you still have a question about it or you feel like it's answered for you? It's it's answered. It's just um, sharing what I... Yeah, what you what, felt. What, what, yeah, it, yeah, it felt to me. It was yeah. great yeah. to understand that. Yeah. yeah. We had a lady, Francine, stay with us. I'll finish now on this uh, little story. Stay with us last week and she was telling me that she had a lot of issues with this free will thing, you know. Yeah, she was just feeling about it and one day she she used to drink coffee. This is when she first found out about the divine truth and she used to drink coffee and she'd go to Starbucks and it was a special ritual with her daughter. Just for special occasions she'd go and have a special coffee with her daughter and she'd have, she used to only have it on skim milk, you know, and... Then she discovered you can have it with cream and sugar. So she'd go and just once in a while and have this coffee with cream and sugar and it was her big treat. And um, this one day she went with her sister and uh, – with her daughter, sorry. And she was coming out and as she was coming out there was a – that she lives in Montreal. There was a homeless man going through the garbage uh, trying to drink out of the, the almost – you know, the empty Starbucks cups. And in that moment she, she went, here, have, have my coffee. And um, she said the feeling she experienced from that was just so beautiful to give away this really special coffee. And her daughter said to her, are you, you going to go and get another one, Mum? And, and she said, no, that, you know, that would ruin the, the point. And um, she said, and that's when I got free will because I had to use my will to do that. And it felt so beautiful. And we all worry about, oh, we use our will and there's all these terrible consequences. But 
I would never have had that beauty if I didn't have free will. I thought that was quite quite beautiful story that she told. Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys. Um, there was more I wanted to say to you. I think. <laughs> I'm sorry these past few weeks have been really intense for me processing and um, I feel like I'm, I'm not quite on my game but I figure that's okay. <laughs> uh, you all bring so much to the group. I just have to sit up here and mumble a few words in the in, the, in between times. <laughs> um, I just wanted to think about the last thing I was going to tell you and it's gone. So... We're going to have a break from book group because AJ and I are going to be travelling again. So we will be, I hope, we'll have a book group in Kyabra while we're away, which would be Chapter 7. So hopefully we'll be back here at the end of June to do Chapter 8 with you guys. We'll have two sessions and then AJ and I are going overseas for four or five weeks and maybe we'll get to have one in Sweden because Anna in Sweden religiously emails me her answers. So maybe we could sit down and talk about a chapter with her and you'd get to see it on YouTube. So uh, I hope you don't mind the, um, the travelling book club, but I think it adds flavour. Yeah, yeah. And it gives them an opportunity. They have to watch us on YouTube. So, you know, give them the opportunity to, to talk in person. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thanks, you guys. It's Even though I'm not on my game, I'm really enjoying book group. It's just such a lovely experience to have with all of you and, and thank you for giving me this opportunity yeah, to share with you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a few weeks, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll see you Saturday. That's right. There's another thing. <laughs> Saturday's God's Way of Love event in Mergen, which should be fun. Yeah. <laughs>